Is that the helmet you were talking about? Do you want to know the really cool part? Tell me. We use it to track dimensional pathways to create images of what we can't see when we blink. Well, all right then. Let's do this. Blinking, scientifically known as a nicotate. We average 10 blinks per minute. Each blink lasting approximately 0.3 seconds. That is 48 minutes you spend in complete darkness. Now, if 48 minutes of your day are missing, what are we not seeing? What else is there out there? We're about to find out. doorway and this thing came through and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Gamefest Radio, the radio you can see. And welcome, everybody, to ScareFest Television, the original broadcast date, November 10th, 2023. And all I can say is we're in, like, day five or six of Great Gate. Um, if you don't know what that is, I'm not even going to bring it up anymore. Um, um, my, uh, we got other, we got stuff to do tonight. We're talking to the Booth Brothers. First, I want to get my co-host, the lovely and talented Joanna Hochstetter on to the uh, screen there. And um, now before I go on, Joanna, I'm just going to ask you, um, I am doing, I want you to look very closely tonight. This is second week of No Shave November. And so I'm growing my beard. But my actual thing is, I want to ask you, how do women feel about just for men, the beard dye? I believe it's acceptable, but, you know, I do enjoy a little gray and the, forest see women are such hypocrites <laughs> they, they, they wear makeup from head to toe dye their hair god puts a little oh well anyway we're talking to the booth brothers tonight hello gentlemen <laughs> how are you hello i we just use just men just saying it. <laughs> okay. well I, i've got that little gray in the forest mascara works well too the uh and uh, okay everybody uh, the Booth Brothers brought to, quite by surprise, I might add, I had no idea you all were even had anything ready to enter this year into the Scarefest Film Festival, but um, they brought a little ditty called Never Blink, and it just blew the judges' pants off. It was just absolutely, um, it, uh, it, it, just, it rocked everyone's world. It was just a great movie, so we're going to be talking about that tonight. That, of course, was a trailer you saw earlier. I do want to say uh, Joe Lewis will be here later on with his review of Totally Killer. Um, 
and week two of no shave November. That's about all my bullshit I got. Um, anyway, uh, oh, I do want to point out though. Do you all worry about AI taking your jobs? Our jobs? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's like my AI. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, that's that's a loaded conversation, but I think the truth of the matter is AI imitates. It doesn't create. So in the sense that it's an imitation in the first place. So real creation comes from original concept, and AI is pulling from stuff that's already created. And I so, think there will be a new market that will start. That will be say there's no AI in there, just like there's you know hardly any CGI. It's all practical. So I think eventually it might turn itself around. I think filmmakers honestly have to learn how to incorporate AI because it's it's like way back in the day when CDs came out or when DVDs came out. You can't stop it. You can certainly find a way to utilize it for your needs because it's not. I mean, even the great directors like Ridley Scott had had, had his opinion on it and. And he says, you're not going to be able to stop it. So you're going to have to find a way to work with it. But I think it does take away some people's jobs. Indeed. I mean, I do. I think it, it, video games, um, you know, they have AI script writers, AI. Um, you know, the the SAG um, strike is over now, yeah. right? Officially. Yeah, I, and, it's funny. And, okay, just to interrupt you just a second. When, it, when they started striking, that was every other goddamn post on Facebook. They ended it, and I've seen like two posts in the last... Three yeah, yeah, and the thing about it, though, Wes, the thing about it is their settlement for forty million dollars donated to SAG from the movie companies to help compensate residuals for that stuff. The only thing that they ended up doing was that background extras and supporting actors can be AI. So you know, it it, it only benefited a listers, is what I'm saying. That's the problem with that is it's an only benefit for Brad Pitt. It's only a benefit for bit A listers. You know, it's kind of like Scott, you know, they have said Skynet's gonna destroy everything like in Terminator. In some senses, <laughs> AI is like Skynet. I mean, they did it to what CDs, music, mm -hmm. now streaming films. I mean, unfortunately, as we all know, filmmakers hardly make any money anymore through streaming. It's so difficult. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think if you're an artist, you do it anyway. But it's getting a little difficult, indeed. But, you know, that's how it is, so. <laughs> funny, funny story. The only reason I ask that is because Facebook has been recommending women's climbing gear to me. <laughs> women's <laughs> mountain climbing harnesses. And I'm like, is there something you're trying to tell us, Wes? I I, <laughs> well, it's something Facebook is obvious. Apparently, my Google searches are not skewed the way I thought they were. That's all I'm well, saying. I know what to get you for Christmas this year, though, so that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I, <laughs> Remember that, right? <laughs> uh, okay. A very good explanation on uh, on AI, by the way. Much more in-depth than I thought we'd be able to get. Now, I do want to jump on to the streaming uh, stuff. Is uh -huh. all these streaming services, I mean, from a filmmaker's standpoint, looking at it as dispassionately or overpassionately, however you want to look at it. Is this is it good for the film industry to have a gluttony of outlets or is it uh, a problem? And it's I don't think it's in the world. It's a catch twenty two because I mean I, I mean we're about the same age Wes, so what I'm trying to say is back then they had something called quality control, right? Where they actually looked at it and said, Oh, this isn't good enough quality to stream. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing, but for us you know, our film, which we really take a lot of time and spend quite more money than a lot of people, mostly more time than anything, making sure things right. People just blow stuff out and these, you know, certain channels will pick it up and you're, you know, you're on, on what, trying to find a film and you're going through literally 300 pieces of crap and your film's in the middle of it. So it's, there's no quality. I think, quality. yeah, the, I mean, we just did, you know, did the American film art, and of course, a lot of the buyers there are, are buying for OTT, which is online streaming, which is to be you know, online streaming. Yeah. And I think the way it is is for a filmmaker, the more platforms you're on, the more revenue you will make. However, what happens is it's like if I go from Pluto to Plex to um, Freebie to Tubi, 
I'm starting to see the same movies on absolutely every channel. And I mm -hmm. think what we need to do is we need to have better quality control. Like Chris said, like, for instance, we're very fortunate to be on Apple and Apple TV. Oh, Actually, on the streaming services, they have a level of how hard it is to get your movie on those channels. And Apple TV is one of the one that's much harder, uh, much more higher quality. And so um, we're very fortunate that all our movies now is on, on Apple TV. Well, are you talking about something like um, Plex or Freebie or whatever, which is a lot easier to get your channels on there, your you're movies on there, I should say. But however, you're competing with somebody that shot uh, something on a cell phone well, you spend a million dollars unless you have a, a big star in there or you have a marketing campaign, you know, they're not going to market it for you. You have to market yourself. Yeah, it doesn't matter if a channel picks you up. It depends how much money you have to spend on advertising. You have to spend it yourself unless a network like Peacock or MGM or mm -hmm. Discovery Channel, Hulu, HBO Max will spend that kind of marketing. As you know, Whereas we first started, we were on the Sci-Fi Channel, so they spent, they they marketed, they they spent a million dollars a movie. That was our movies were a million dollars each, Dead Still and mm -hmm. Death Tunnel, and they would spend the advertising. Now they'll sign your movie, but you say they say like AMC called me the other day, said you want to put your movies in theaters. We're interested in putting your film in. How much do you have to spend to market it? <laughs> and I'm going, well, we have to start at a hundred grand. And I'm going, wow, <laughs> you know, here we go. So, But I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, and without tooting our own horn, we're really proud because up here is eight of the 11 titles we have right now on streaming on Prime, Apple, and Tubi. And some of these titles are some of our earlier ones that got us into the industry, but it's opening up a whole new brand new market for us. A younger market that's watching streaming platforms that didn't buy the DVD. I think the great thing for filmmakers that are watching, the most important thing you really need to focus on is your marketing and your game business plan. Like, for instance, we re-released our documentary, The Exorcist File, right when the new Exorcist came out. The Exorcist Believer came so out. We put that out again, and we made a lot of money off of that because it was at the right time in the right place. Trending, that's what you have to yeah. do. If you're mm -hmm. filmmaking, you gotta follow what's trending because that's what the market is always looking at. This is what's gonna be popular, this is gonna be popular. And if you take too long to make that movie about that specific item or trend, trends have changed next year, and now you're back to square Unless home. you're in a niche like Winnie the Pooh and you know how that did really well, but it's not a very necessarily a great film but it was put out right at the right time and kids people were interested in Winnie the Pooh being a serial killer you know like Humpty Dumpty being a serial killer it's a niche it's a built-in market so they got it you know and uh, uh <laughs> Joanne I'm gonna go over to you after the commercial break but I will say now I do know I have figured out by looking at my own TV that if you want to get on Netflix you need to start making your films in India India, okay? Uh-huh. Yes, okay. you can dub them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Horror. Movie. Fan. Four. Life. On Facebook. Find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. So good to see the Bruce Feathers again. I uh, hello, how are you? 
I'm doing so well, and I'm so excited to be a part of this. And I have to get my fangirl out of the way. Um, I got to escort you on the black carpet. That was me. Oh. And that was such an honor. Thank you so much for letting me have that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you so much. So, oh, thank you. My yes. pleasure. <laughs> so moving to Never Blink. You, yeah, like Wes said, you guys knocked it out of the park. It was phenomenal. And thank yes, you. excellent. So you know, watching it, and I don't want to give away too much for people that haven't seen it yet, but, you know, what goes on when you blink and just really looking into that in this movie, it was an awesome, unique concept, and I have to Thank know you. what was the inspiration behind this. Was it like a dream or maybe like a actual experience that the story built on top of? Well, it was an idea that, that I came up with a long time ago, and it's like we have so many ideas that we throw out there when we make new movies, like, you know, how Death Tunnel was about. Death Tunnel, well, our first film for Sony, was never about Waverly Hills Sanatorium until we went there to, to actually do something else. And then I found out what the story was and it clicked. And it's really weird. You can just be walking out anywhere or some thought comes to you and it clicks and go like, that would make a great movie or an idea, right? And so same with Dead Still with about a postmortem Victorian death camera that remembered the pictures it took when they were taking, you know, pictures of the dead. And now the guys inherited a camera. So we never blink. It was like, that's an interesting concept because now I'm kind of thinking about how it came and the concept was, and uh, did you see the movie, Joanna? Did you get, you did? Okay, well, you know, when you blink for people who haven't seen it, it's 0.10 seconds. So if you add that throughout the day, it's actually 48 minutes you spend blinking. And if you notice, if you blink now, you'll notice you'll see a little bit of darkness. So you actually spend 48 minutes in the darkness per day. And I go, and I felt, well, wham, there was another world that you were missing. And being in the paranormal also, we always see things out the corner of our eye. We wonder how they enter and how they exit, whether it's paradigm or vortex or another world. And that's all connected to there's a whole nother world that you could be missing when you blink. Like something happens the minute you blink but you didn't see it because it blinks just a whole nother world. And it just became, it would be very creepy, it was able to capture what was in the darkness. And it was scary as hell. And that's how it all started. See, the mind, and the mind fills in the gap. When you're walking, you, you just blink now. When you're walking, you don't see a flutter like a black and, you know, because the mind automatically fills in the last image you saw. So there wasn't a strobing effect. And you have your but the idea, you don't but the thing them. is, it's a false image. Yeah. It's something that's already happened. It's not, you know, current. This is scientific, you know, uh, facts. So we thought, well, as if we created a movie about people that could record, five neuroscience could record actually what you see in those gaps and it could seem together. And we thought that would be a good original horror. And if we could get people to be afraid to blink. And the question is, Joanna, are you afraid? Are you afraid to blink now? I mean, you know what I mean. Because if you blink and there's something there, you ain't gonna want to blink. Yeah. So we thought it would be a, you know, as horror filmmakers, it's our films are fresh. They're not the same ideas over and over again. Whether it's Dead Still, Dark Place, um, all these are fresh concepts. That yes. we, you know, we're not we're not just doing um, ideas that have been done fifty million times. Because that gets really tedious for the viewers, and, and the viewers are smart, and they, they think, want fresh ideas. I think good or bad, we're not cookie cutter, and we really believe in what we do. I, I know that you're a, an actress and a comedian, I believe, right? Is that correct? Yeah, correct. So, well, I mean, as and Wes, everybody here is an artist, so there's a <laughs> certain amount of passion, you know, there's a certain amount of passion that you put in. And I think for me, and I have to say, it's really about the passion more than it is the success of the money, because obviously the business is, is up and down all the time and all that kind of crazy stuff. But There's nothing, at the end of the yeah. day, you really want to know you've done something. I mean, when you're sitting and working on a movie, you really feel proud of, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the amount of time we, we put in to, into pre-production, post-production and all that stuff. Um, there's nothing greater than that high. Uh, of achievement knowing that hey that we created this and then we're really proud of this and people are going to see wow this is unique 
You know, there's so many people that copy the same idea, you know, and they'll jump on a fad or a bandwagon, a bandwagon, and, and it's an insult to the audience because they're just being fed the same thing over and over again. It's hamburgers every day, you, you know? know. So you're contributing to creating new content and new ideas. Our next movie will have to be just as unique. It can't just be something, you know, um, that's, that's out there already. So that's kind of how we we work. Yes, and yeah, your fans, we appreciate that so much that you do have all these new, you know, innovative ideas. And yes, we appreciate that very much. Thank so you. For, so for, um, yeah, and I see you have all your movies that behind you and the uh, platforms that uh, they're available on. So I was just wondering, um, are there plans for Never Blink to come to any of the streaming platforms? Well, well, yes, absolutely. Well, eventually, how it works, I mean, for, at least for us, you can easily make a film and then you can move it to what they call an aggregation. An aggregation goes to all the streaming service, which is called OTT sites, which is, you know how, um, oh, we'll, we'll go way back, but, you know, say uh, theatrical was replaced by Betamax, by VHS, by DVD, by Blu-ray, by streaming. Well, what is now is OTT, which is a bunch of companies that stream hundreds and hundreds of movies. That's like it's Tubi, Amazon, uh, Vudu, you know, all those. And there's hundreds of these companies and they all, a lot of them have all the same <laughs> yeah. films and they pay just pennies on the dollar, I'm afraid, to the distributors. And at that point, they pay penny on the dollar to the filmmakers. What Philip and I have done is learned the business a long time ago. I was taught by domestic and international sales agents how to understand and sell films because I sell our films to Sony and I actually do it myself and I do, I do a lot of the contracts. So we were very lucky to keep the rights to all our films. So some of these films behind us are actually started in 2006 or one of them actually 2003 and we still own them and we keep it's not that we keep rehashing them because we don't we they get them for seven years and then we re-release and re-release and then we sometimes upgrade them to hd 4k etc but your your question i'm never blink is never blinks at the film markets now which is the american film market that just happened in los angeles in santa monica and then there's the efm the european film market which is happening in berlin germany and then there's cons in france and the film goes with an agent to them and who sells it to very big companies, um, you know, Sony, IFC, uh, A24, the different, the big Lionsgate, the big films. And we always have had the luck to sell our films to Sony. Yeah, Sony Lionsgate. picked up Death Tunnel and they had the first option and Sony picked up Universal Television. But you have to be patient. The film, indie filmmakers is a hard business. And indie filmmakers, yeah, especially if they have investors that are hungry, they want their return. And they can get eaten, eaten alive on streaming platforms because it, unless you've got a good accounting deal, you will never see that. And as much as we are into the art, we're into the business of it. Otherwise, you won't be able to continue making new movies. Yeah, so the answer is it eventually would be imaginably on the streaming, but it's got to go through a huge company first. That's probably going to be honestly next Halloween. That's okay. how long it will take. So you've actually, everybody that saw Never Blink, it's a blessing because you're the only ones that are going to see I mean, it for a year. I mean, for your, <laughs> yeah, for some of your filmmakers, you know, I don't know if you want to talk film uh, with this interview, but horror films, It Follows, was a great movie, right? You saw It yeah. Follows, everyone knows It Follows. Well, here's the industry in its sense. Well, here at the American Film Art this year, they introduced selling the rights to the sequel they follow to foreign buyers to purchase the rights so they can raise the money to make it. But oh, wow. that's 10 years later. It Follow came out in 2014. I guess it didn't follow. So <laughs> see what I'm saying, how hard it is for any movies because people that really love that movie as fans, you know, it does pretty good but they're not jumping on it right away they're having to wait 10 years to make that movie and or what was just picked up is late night with the devil which is about hosting um someone on the tv who becomes possessed that's two years ago it was made did the like festival circuit 
and it just got picked up this year by well, Exodus I, file took a while the sci-fi channel our Exodus file documentary was actually originally scheduled to be sold to sci-fi channel back in 2009 okay and that's when they actually just a year after that they went into the Econ board sci-fi channel and mtv and they all bought all of sci-fi channel universal bought everything bought sci-fi channel and fired everybody including the owners and the creators of sci-fi channel so it was scheduled to go out then so we waited three years actually to actually release exorcist file and it's done phenomenal and went everywhere from that was when video was going because it went to red box which red box unfortunately is gonna be under soon the kiosks are gonna go down because everybody's streaming nobody wants dvd anymore well chicken soup for the soul company which is a big company bought red box mm -hmm. and they put everything in shambles but you know the truth of the matter is if you care about your film and you put a lot of passion into it and you know that it it's a, a great film then you're going to to see it get the right home to too many filmmakers sell their rights to their films to the wrong people and they don't see any money from it and unfortunately then they get disheartened and then they don't want to do it anymore so a good filmmaker nowadays knows the market and they know enough about business and marketing as much as they know about shooting and editing yeah like for instance your budget if you or joanna you made a movie and you say you got a million dollars what would you do with that money to make it most people spend a million dollars making it. Uh uh. Why don't you spend five hundred thousand dollars making it and spend five hundred thousand dollars marketing it? Because it's going to go a lot farther if you spend the money on the marketing than it does in the budget of the film. You could spend ten thousand dollars making a movie and nine hundred ninety thousand dollars marketing, and it'll be far more successful than making a million dollar film. Okay. Wow, thank you. I had I had no idea. I really appreciate that. Yeah, there'll be there'll be a test later. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm sure it's my notepad. <laughs> so, I got it. So, you ha guys have you know released a lot in these past just short few years. So, is do you have anything in the works right now? Or are you taking a break? We always have things. Wow, in the <laughs> we <all> sad. <laughs> That's a break. I mean, we just got off the road. And I'm spending some time with my son, which I'm excited about because I don't see him very much. And um, he's just learning how to drive and stuff, so it's all cool. But um, awesome. yeah, it's it's a it's a dad thing, you know. We'll always be creating, and but I think we're going to do some. Probably we're going to do a we're going to definitely do another big movie next year, and probably going to do some because uh, I got approached. So we're probably going to do some more paranormal TV stuff mostly because i mean it's easy to sell in the sense of how you can turn them around and it's an interesting subject i mean being involved in the paranormal and um you would i don't know if you're into the haunted stuff i know that that wes has seen quite a bit of the stuff that we have but i mean we have had some very disturbing stuff in the house so we've created pro yeah we've created projects from it I mean, I don't know if you so, are familiar with our library up here. This on the top right here is Exodus yeah. file. But the reason yeah. why that was so popular is because of Exodus Believer. But we got a copy of the actual di diary from the Vatican of the real Exodus diary that they wrote the book and made the movie from that journal. And we took a paranormal group and made a documentary for sci-fi discovery. And it was a red box. Um, and went every place listed in that diary and talk to the the priest that was still alive, the sister of the boy that was possessed. They changed it to a girl for the movie. That was the scariest, some of the scariest that we've ever done. Even when you make horror, there's nothing scarier than and then we, going to the real We thing. do a lot of possession shows, which I think, Joanna, you'd probably be great at being possessed, I think. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, we can uh, well, Wes hold the auditions, but uh, we had gotten the uh, the real exorcism box of Annalise McKell, which is a real Emily Rose, and it was the box that was in her bed. Used in the actual exorcism. So that, that energy. Say <laughs> what? In your basement in a steel box? No, 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 I actually, Zach Bagans bought it from me. Um, oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> he, he took it into the haunted museum. 
in Las Vegas, and he made he owned his own special Booth Brothers Exorcist room. And you go in there and you see it's got the diary. You see the out. diary we had, and then you see the exorcism box, and then you have little clips of the attach, which what happened to me when I had been involved in that box. Um, and you know how my life changed and I got divorced and crazy shit happened. And see, I think it was the, crazy. The niche you know. here, Joanna, the niche for us and our fans that the goal way back when we started doing Death Tunnel in 2004, we were just making a horror movie for Sony, a teenage horror movie. And it was amazing and shooting in Waverly Hill Sanatorium, as you well know, if you in Kentucky. Um, but so much real stuff happened while we were paranormal activity happened so much while we're shooting that film that we ended up doing a documentary about that, which sci-fi picked up, which is called Spook, The Ghost of Waverly Hills, and that did two million views on Sci-Fi Channel, and that started all our films. But the bottom line is, we shoot the films at the real places. We, If there's ghosts involved, we put recreations of the ghosts of the visual effects where those ghosts are supposed to have been seen. And if there's tragedies, suicides, or whatever the deaths that happened that created those ghosts, we bring the actors to those actual places where they committed suicide and shoot their parts there. So we're imprinting that energy into the film. And sure enough, it worked. Because what happened on that film, doing Death Tunnel, and that's on Apple TV right now and, and um, Amazon Prime. And, and it's been the number, what was 65 countries that film's been in. It's seen by over 20 million people. That film has real EVPs, real ghosts, real vo uh, ghost voices. We feel we were a vessel. And five girls in 90s. Yeah, five girls in 90s, of course. <laughs> the horror film. But we feel <laughs> that we are a vessel. Our films are a vessel for those spirits to talk through. So when we go do films now that are to do with ghosts, and we have several, we do investigations first, and we get their evidence, and then we write their part as from that paranormal evidence so they have a voice in our films as an actor. So they get to, you know, they get to choose like this the script that the spirits write. And that's what makes us stuff special because it's not all scripted or shot on sets or artificial in the haunted auction. We have a haunted auction company called the Haunted Bazaar. Every month we do a haunted we sell an auction off haunted items. Oh prop, yeah, or not not props, but actually things that come from asylum. So we put them into the film. Really crazy stuff. So that is what makes, I think, the yeah. Booth Brothers films, and, and our diehard fans know that. And of course, even in the horror films, we give them compassion. We find a way to bring a human side to them. It's just not all demonic and monsters. We find a way to, at the end, every film we've ever done, Joanna, has a beautiful ending. Whether it's romance or um, some kind of redemption, redemption, yeah, you know what? What disappointed me for horror fans watching your show, Hills of Eyes, the remake. I hated. I thought it was so well shot and done, but I hated how everybody just killed, 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 killed. It's like there's no redemption, you know. And then you think at the end, oh, two people get away, and then they just kill. Like they're meaningless, and I I think our message is just yeah. Great. I mean, I'm I'm not not against it, but we don't do slasher films. We do more like beautiful ghost stories and supernatural stuff. That's more like real life, <laughs> not like watching the news where everybody's getting murdered and stuff. Which I'm not saying this, you know. And I know there's a huge market, and that's great. That's just not what we do. We try to tell a story that you really get involved in, where it's romantic and then it's scary and then. It's you know like a roller coaster. Right? Even in the documentaries, the real story of the exorcism of Emily Rose with his two hundred actual recordings. We got the footage and the recordings, and that's in the attached, which you can see on Apple TV Prime and Tubi. Amazing documentary. Is we made sure we told the real story, that at the end when they exhumed her body, it didn't rot. And to her, when the priest saw that, they sainted her and they built a monument to her. If you watch the movie Exorcism of Mary Rose, she just dies pointlessly and she's remembered as this awful monster. There's always 
a side to these stories, horror-based sides, that there is light. And I think as filmmakers, it's up to us to influence people. And that's why I don't like doing serial killer movies. We, we do like to end by people. That's what I love to do. That's why I do music as well. I do, my main thing is to inspire people to make their life better. Even in a horror movie, you can take them on an incredible adventure, but at the same time, I think it's nice to win. <laughs> You know, I don't want to watch something where I'm going to lose all the time, you know? I mean, if you're gifted as a filmmaker or an actress or anything to be able to get out there and act, then I think you need to somehow find a way to put your message across. You know, it's not just about a gig and being hired. If you're fortunate, as we have been grateful, so grateful to have so many shows for so many years and still now renew a streaming deal, worldwide for 11 titles this halloween and we still have three more titles yet to come then i think we're doing something right and i think it's because people are seeing that depth they're seeing that emotion they're seeing that you're giving a shit enough to move an audience not just like sell out and go well hey you know what's in this week serial killers or or exploitive graphic nudity or exploitive rape scenes and all the cost i hate I hate those kind of movies. I think that it sends a message to people. I mean, you know, a lot of, it may be popular, but personally, they don't work for me because I think the wrong people watch it and they get glorified. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I, was like, I think I might have kept you guys too long. Is it, uh, do I need to send it back to you, Wes? Yeah, let's take a commercial break and we'll be back with what little bit of announcements we have. Are you a fan of horror movies, books, comics, music, and collectibles? Rumorg Magazine is for you. Subscribe today to receive 6 or 12 print issues annually and join me, executive editor Andrea Cibisati, on an ongoing journey through the horror genre of the past, present, and future. Plus, get access to unmissable special editions such as A Century of Witches, 50 Years of Gore Cinema, British Horror Movies, and so much more. Rumor, the world's premier horror and culture and entertainment magazine since 1997. Accept no substitute. Hey, don't forget everybody. Our next Central Kentucky Mystical Market is coming up December 9th and 10th. Lexington's premier monthly psychic and holistic event, Newtown Pike, the Clarion Hotel in Lexington, Kentucky. And I am up to 39 people that have subscribed to my Patreon account. 39. Now, admittedly, 10 of them like got the free version, and this means they're on the email list, but still, I appreciate the hell out of it. 39 That's people. Nice. Till I this do one. that cosplay you were just looking at. Wow. Anyway, patreon.com slash scarefest radio. And finally, I do want to plug next Saturday, November 18th, 2023, the Southern Light Stroll. Jake Godbold has sponsored me to do the 5K out to the Kentucky Horse Park that afternoon, evening. And if it's raining, I'm not going to do it. But it's <laughs> because deep at art, I am still a big pussy. When he gets right down to it. But anyway, okay. Back to the Booth Brothers. Um, 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 first of all, I want to thank you for calling me an artist. You are. And um, now, uh, let's see. I guess we know, sir. I don't even know where to go with it. it there, okay, I'm going to get a couple of uh, chat room questions in. In Okay, first, I'm going to give everybody the description of, of Never Blink. And then I'm going to ask the, ask the question. Five medical students discover a way to capture what you can't see when you blink. And the results are terrifying. A frightening journey into the macabre world that will make you never blink again. In the blink of an eye, you will die. I have to admit, the, the whole dying part, definite, definite um, impetus to not blink. Now, someone did ask, um, 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 Doctor Who's... Um, had something called the Weeping Angels. I don't watch Doctor Who, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. we, we get the biggest bunch of nerds. Was that any inspiration towards this movie, I think was the question. Um, I was aware of it, but it actually, Weeping Angels, um, as same with the, if you know, SCPs, 
uh, Secure Contain Protect, which is a big industry in um, CG, uh, animation and games. They actually had a person that, if you looked at him, would be blinked as well, and he, they had a monster. But no on both those. I was aware of it, and it's kind of a different concept than the Weeping Angels, so not really. Okay. <laughs> You could have said anything. I wouldn't have known if you were lying to me or not. I had no, no I had absolutely I know that no episode well. No, that episode's <laughs> one of my favorites, but it's a kind of a different concept. They move closer and then they kill you. Yeah, that's what. Oh, happens cool. Yeah. Now uh, the uh, people in the chat room, uh, somebody does want to know: Do you all ever do sell that your soundtrack work? Do what? Your soundtrack work. You're famous for making all this music. Do you ever just? Slap that on a CD and drop it at the cons or anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. On Christopher Saint, uh, iTunes, Amazon Music, uh, Deezer, all of them. It's every streaming. Just Christopher Spotify. Saint. It's everywhere. Pandora, Spotify. Christopher Saint is my stage name for my music. And, yeah, music is, is definitely my life. Yes. Thank you for asking that. And uh, now, uh, serious question here. You because you you put a lot of emphasis on it. The whole budget. The, I liked what you said about if you had a million dollars, how you would spend it to make a movie. Is mm. that something that's even taught to these new filmmakers uh, that, are, um, that are coming out? No, no. I mean, I think that a lot of them have a, a you know, like anything on social media. Wes, I know you're very well aware of it. it goes on in, with every company a lot of whiners and complainers and a lot of people that bitch all the time and they don't really know, you know, why they're bitching. They just want to bitch. But I think that anybody's got to know that, like, even with the 200, 300 million dollar movies Hollywood puts out, they put in over 400, 600 million dollars in marketing. So in order to make a billion dollars, they've literally spent 800 million you know, to make that, and then if they make two billion, they they're successful. That's why you see so many Hollywood companies saying that film was a fl was a flop, and it made a hundred million dollars. Well, it cost two hundred million dollars to promote it. You know, because it has to be everywhere. You know, it has to be you know not just social media, but everywhere. I mean, everywhere. So I don't know if they know it or not. I mean, it's something you should know. Look at the Exorcist believer. We all of us saw zillions of ads and social media ads and everything when it was coming out. Oh, it was everything, right? It was everything. And then it played and it got all these really bad, bad reviews. Yeah. And now you don't see one ad. ad for it at all. But it made its money. It made, I think, uh, well, it spent $40 million on I that. think it's made close to that now. I spent $20 renting it and it was absolutely terrible. So <laughs> I want my $20 back. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I spend right twenty dollars. There better be a theater seat and popcorn included. Well, Linda, Linda Blair came at the end, and I swear I love Linda Blair, but she looked older than Ellen Bernstein. What well, her name? <laughs> Ellen Bernstein. Yeah. yeah. And it was just so put in there and propped, and it was so contrived. It, it was, was the money grab. It, the movie was bloody called the exorcist believer and the exorcist only in it for three minutes you know what i mean like whoa <laughs> sorry i paid twenty dollars i have a right to complain <laughs> it was disappointing um okay uh, one more quick one here uh but, um, um and this is this uh i'd planned this earlier because it's kind of one of my bullshit questions but where did you film them. this? It it had quite the mix of accents. Where did you actually film at? Well, Netflix? yeah, Tatiana is Australian, and Marcus is British. Is British, um, but we filmed it in Toledo, Ohio, actually, at the Collingwood's the Collingwood Art, Art Center, which is a haunted. Um, you knew that? Me. I love did it. Know, did you know that it was no? It was filmed, at, it was filmed in a convent. That the played, 18th century. That was an old 1800, yeah. in the late 1800s, early 1900s convent that they turned into, um, uh, it was a nunnery. In fact, on the top floor where some of the scenes is shot, they have the little nuns' isolation cells with about mm -hmm. six feet, feet long by, it couldn't even... And we also shot it in an abandoned high school 
which I give my uh, shout out to Dan Allen, who let us use it. And he has a company called Stop, which is Save the Old ha old Properties. Mm -hmm. And he, he uh, helps um, reestablish buildings before they pull down. It was a completely blown out old high school. It looked like Resident Evil took over. And he just let us go in. And, and we were very lucky, Wes, because that high school, that old school, had the same structure, structure as the Collingwood the old theater, but it was mm -hmm. destroyed. The old lockers, but it was destroyed. So it looked like Silent Hill so or something. It was like, yeah, you know, today and and apocalyptic compared together. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. Toledo, fucking Ohio. Neat. Yeah. Okay. It's a great place. <laughs> We're going to take our last commercial break of the hour and we'll come back, everybody, with more with the Booth Brothers. Spiritmechanics.com. Spiritmechanics.com. My buddies over at Spear Mechanics have a brick and mortar store now, the Missing Element Shop, your one stop shop for spirit mechanics, Stevens, healing vibrations, metaphysical supplies, books, divination, and altar supplies, tarot and oracle decks, handmade glassware, spirit boards, vibrational sound healings through the use of singing bowls and tuning forks, courtesy of Stephen Tyree. They also do classes on metaphysics and paranormal investigations, and you owe it to yourself to check out their website. And if you don't want to do that, at least look them up on Facebook and watch their live shows. They do like at least one a week. They usually, I think they do more than that. But uh, uh, check them out just to get into their classes. Uh, they Occasionally, they'll take you out on actual ghost hunts. They're great guys. Spiritmechanics.com. Spiritmechanics.com. Now for Bonehead Weekly. Hey, Scarefest fans, it's Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. In this week's review, do you like movies about slashers? Okay. Do you like movies about the 80s? Hey. Do you like movies about slashers about the 80s that involve time travel? Yes, you do. And we're not just talking about the one that's that one movie with the thing and it's basically Groundhog Day with a slasher. Oh, no. We're talking about an Amazon exclusive. We're talking about Totally Killer. Totally Killer is directed by Nanachka Khan, and honestly, she's directed a lot of TV. I wasn't really, I didn't know a lot about her rest of her career, but this isn't a terrible movie. And actually, it stars Kiernan Shipka. You may know her from Sabrina, the new Sabrina Teenage Witch on Netflix, the one with all the occult stuff. And, and she was originally, I know her from Mad Men. And basically what it is, is it's 35 years after the shocking murders of three teens, an infamous killer returns on Halloween night to claim a fourth victim. Her 17-year-old daughter, Jamie, comes face-to-face -face with the killer, and she basically accidentally time travels back to 1987, and she has to go through all the things that you would imagine she goes through. So there's all the jokes about, you can't just call somebody Fat Ethel. There's all the jokes about, oh my God, there's so much sexism. There's so much, all the things that you would think, all the cultural insensitivities that existed in 1987 are all there. And she has to meet her mom when her mom is 17 and take down the psycho killer once and for all and get back in time. Hold on. There's another movie that got back in time. Don't remember which one of those it is. Julie Bowen plays her mom. Julie Bowen is a character actress that you would know from a lot of other things. So if you've seen, I don't know, Freaky, where they switch bodies and you've seen, it's, it's, it's in the sense of that. It's a comedy. It does have some blood in it. My friend Chad really liked this movie, and I actually don't dislike it. In fact, I kind of it's a half-hearted recommend if you have Amazon to go ahead and watch it. If nothing else, for the soundtrack, for some of the jokes, for some of the throwaway throwback, throwbacks to the 80s. I mean, everybody loves the, the 80s have never left us. Is it a fantastic movie? I think the problem is with this movie is that there's a lot of jokes I felt like were left on the floor. There was stuff they could have mined out of it. I was like, oh, this could be funnier. We just, I don't know, it just needed another draft. I find this a lot when I'm watching movies. Screen, another draft. The screenplay could have used another draft. And I, it's not that I disliked the movie. I didn't. I watched it over two or three nights, and it's okay. It's pretty decent. In fact, I enjoyed it. And the acting's pretty good, and there's nobody who's awful in it. And it's funny, and it's so slightly inventive of several things that we've seen before. It could have been funnier. Chad really liked it. I think a lot of you all are going to really like it. There's a reason why I'm going to recommend it. Is it my cup of tea? It could have been. It just didn't quite get 
there. There's some blood, there's some kills. If nothing else, then I got to see that rotating thing from the 80s that we all got on the Galvatron or Gavatron or whatever it was called. The Gravitron. Gravitron's what you're thinking of, Joe Lewis. Galvatron is a transformer. Gravitron that we all got in and spin like this and went around risking our lives at, for people who were making $3 an hour who couldn't care less smoking grass on the side, or is that just me? Anyway, maybe you had a different childhood experience than I did in the 80s. But I did that with the Twister and all those things. So it's cool seeing that. I don't see a lot of those anymore. Should you see Totally Killer? Absolutely, if you have Amazon Prime. Don't go out of your way for it. It's fun. It has time travel. It has a serial. It has a killer. There's a little bit of blood. It's rated R. It's not like Slother House last week, which was PG-13. This is a little bit more adult. So check out Totally Killer and do that. Once again, I think this is a movie you'd have more fun with watching it with other people. I watched it by myself. Totally killer. This has been totally killer. This has been Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. Sayonara, you scarefest freaks. Love you. Actually, we're not. Hi. Hold on. There we go. Now we're back. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> so um, I wanted to talk about the Exorcist file, the Haunted Boy. So that is, you know, your work that it terrified me the most where I actually felt anxiety and just an irrational fear. And when I would, there was a certain scene that the light started flickering in my room and I went mm. and grabbed this rosary. And in 2022 at Scarefest, I bought this from you, Christopher, and you put it in my hand and put some holy water and blessed it for me. And that was another very special moment that I had for me that I had with you, but I lost the pamphlet. And I believe you told me you found these in a convent in a wall. Is that, I know, I know you've come across so many different relics yeah. and everything. So I was wondering if, 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 does that ring a bell or any, cause I know that's yeah, probably- Yeah, yeah very much so. Carmelite nuns, the Carmelite yeah. nuns um, they have, you can't see their faces. They have very blacked out. They talk to you behind wire and they don't look at you in the eyes and they don't, they necessarily don't even talk. They just kind of mumble and they get hand you notes because they're so devout that they've taken the vow of silence and the vow of sight. And the the rosaries that you've got, and that looks like a very, Joanna, that looks, judging by that looks like a very old one. Yeah. Yeah, they're very, very beautiful. Hardly any left now that, that I had. But yeah, it's a very powerful thing. And that's actually just the part of the many things that that I think connect to what we do and put in the inspiration of our films is that sort of passion. As when I you know, told you that the nuns had to pass the energy, we got it from the nuns and I had to give it to you that way. I think that's what we do with our films. We try to do that same um, pa passing on of, of how we feel and hopefully that you feel that same inspiration and that energy. Um, what I love about you know, just after we don't use the word religion, which is somewhat of a, a, a interesting word now. It's about devotion and, and intent and belief in something so much that you create something because you believe in love or you believe in in anything you do so much that it creates this aura around you. So when you're holding something like that, you can feel it from somebody and pass nothing but positivity. And the same thing can happen negatively. That's what the Haunted Bazaar tries to stay away from as far as getting items that are very dark and negative. That's why I let some of the stuff go to Zach because Zach Bagans wanted to, you know, being the master of the macabre and what he does, he's very much into the dark stuff. I'm not, I don't want to be around dark stuff. I, I can explain it. We can tell you stories and movies about it, but I don't really want it in my life, you know, because there's so much beautiful stuff out there, you know? But yeah, I remember that moment, Joanna. Yes, yes I do. Yeah. Yes, it was very special. And I, it, I was very, I was enamored and there was nothing else going on at that moment. Just you blessing this. And it, it was, it was very special. So I was like, that was when I was like, I need to learn more about these men. They're they're awesome. <laughs> no, you're very special. I can I can see that that wherever you're heading is going to work out for you. So, well, thank you so much. And yeah, yeah I definitely wanted to know a little bit more about the um, haunted bazaar. I think you have one um, coming up soon. Is it something where you bid on items, or is it more? You well, what just... it is, what it is is um, well, John. Yeah, we actually. It's, it's uh, kind of a post-Black Friday sale, which is 
starts November 30th to December 3rd. It's on Facebook. So you go to the Hunter Bazaar and you'll see an event page and then the event page comes up and on the descriptions tab, there's pictures posted of items and all you do is put in a starting bid is there posted and you put in what you want to pay for it. And if you uh, are the highest bidder, whether it's $5 or $500, depending on what it is, you win it. And a lot, everybody seems very happy with what they get. And, and I, I price things pretty low because I want everybody to have a piece of relic, you know, whatever it may be. And I've been getting really into voodoo and everybody thinks, you know, a lot of people think voodoo is bad and it's not. Voodoo can, again, it's about intention, but all voodoo was ever done was to create positivity and protection from all the villages, whether it was in Haiti, Africa, and then in came the bad ones and created it where you could create a curse with that same item. But the items that I have are very real and they're from the tribes of Africa and from Haiti and voodoo, real voodoo, um, war masks that they, the witch doctors wear, which is so good. I got a living room full of them, and they're so powerful. I mean, you can feel the energy from them, but it, again, it's not its not to, you know, curse curse people. It's, a, it's to create positivity in their life. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I'm definitely going to check that out. <laughs> yeah, the items are great. Once you have them, it's really... Uh, it's like having that rose when you have now, which I'm very honored you still have that. Um, when you have something that means something and you and you can actually <laughs> almost communicate with it in a way saying, hey, help me get through today, you know, kind of vibe, you know, that's how some of these voodoo statues are because like I'm covered in Buddha and Eastern religion, Shiva and all that because for me, that's what works because it's an intention of being positive. And we also put that in our films, even when it's a horror movie, it's just about having really good entertainment. Yeah. Oh, very awesome. Okay. Wes, did you have anything to add to that? I got one more question from the chat room and I almost <laughs> want to ask it in a smart ass way, but I'm not going to. I want to, do you all ever do like uh, behind the scenes production stuff for your DVD cuts. In other words, what goes on during the movie and all that. I, I wanted to ask if you ever do blooper reels, but we'll ask it the first way. Oh well, of course we do. We could. <laughs> there's there's a bunch, and I'll I'll use this as a shameless plug. But if you go to Spook TV YouTube, which is our new YouTube channel, it it focuses on the making the making of and and cool. us telling like we're at the events telling people about like what I just did with Joanna or whatever, the secrets behind the movies and the, the true intent or some things. I mean, you know, when we were talking to um, the priest in the Exodus file, and this was in the blooper reel, though it wasn't a blooper, we after he sold it, the National Choir the story, and he had witnessed the exorcism, we said, so do you believe in the devil now? And he just started to cough and choke on camera. And... We didn't think it was funny because he's 90 something years old, but it the timing was uncanny. And we looked at each other and went, <laughs> but we, and as far as the funny, we like to have fun, but also there's a lot of, um, you know, it's interesting. I think we should almost do a course on it, but I mean, we, we make like, say $10,000 seem like a million because it's all about pre-production and about, you know what to do and you got to get in there and do it. But on the never bling, there was a lot of, a lot of things we were dealing with because you remember that year is where COVID first started, mm -hmm. so we were dealing with that, and then the, and then the uh, you know the over, never breathe the overwhelming <laughs> cancel culture about everything you being British everything's an innuendo. So I should have been canceled a long time ago, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know in the olden days you could say a joke and everybody like it, everyone's care for us is so beautiful. We all get along, we're a big family, but now if you say something. You know, you don't know who's going to come back and say something silly, you know. I am shocked I still have a job. I'll be honest. <laughs> exactly. <with you>. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Both you and I should have been canceled a long time ago, you know. But it's, it's so it's a different world we're living in, you know. And, and I have to say it's taken, and I'm not saying I understand the seriousness of it, so don't get me wrong. But it's taken a lot of fun away from just having a good sense of humor. I know that when my dad died, the first thing he said to me was right before he died was, 
um, Chris, don't lose your sense of humor. Don't lose your sense of humor, people. Please, don't. <laughs> Well, everybody, that has been this week's episode. Next week, we have Stephanie Bingham coming on to talk about what she spoke at spoke about at Scarefest. It was vampires and spiritualism and all kinds of neat stuff like that. And let's face it, she's always the smartest lady in the room. So we're just going to leave it there. We'll see you next week. Thank you.